In unprecedented detail, the James Webb Space Telescope is set to study two strange rocky worlds that fall into the category Super-Earth. Although they're about 50 light-years away, officials promise plenty of off-world geological discoveries, and some of them run a great chance of being astronomical breakthroughs. But don't get your hopes up too high, thinking that there's an Earth-like exoplanet 50 light-years afar, waiting with lush gardens and valleys for humans to colonize. Keep in mind that super-Earths are in reference to an exoplanet's size. They are larger than Earth, yet smaller than Neptune, and they come in a wide variety of planetary compositions, including water worlds, snowball planets, or planets similar to Neptune that are mostly composed of dense gas. Nevertheless, the James Webb Space Telescope has been given its new mission, and with its consortium of state-of-the-art scientific instruments on board, the ambitious agenda will be implemented this summer. The work will be a big stretch for the new observatory, but luckily for you, Space Infinity will take you on the journey as the James Webb Space Telescope puts a godlike eye on super-Earth's orbiting red dwarfs. These two targets are rocky planets, but that doesn't make them easier to observe. Quite the opposite of what the layman might expect. Rocky planets are actually more challenging to see than their gas giant counterparts due to the smaller planet's relative brightness next to a star. And although super-Earths are three to 10 times the size of our Earth, they are still relatively tiny in the whole scope of the cosmos and even compared to stars. Fortunately, the JWST has a super powerful mirror and deep space location that enables it to examine two planets slightly larger than Earth 50 light-years far off. Yes, it is upsetting that these two worlds in question aren't habitable, but scientists are certain that upon further investigations, reports will prove groundbreaking for future in-depth studies of planets that are actually like our home world. As for the first step, the JWST is focused on the super-hot, lava-covered super-Earth known as 55 Cancri E. A second beam of light will be shed on LHS 3844b, which substantially lacks an atmosphere. 55 Cancri E, also known as Janssen, orbits its parent star Copernicus at a constricted 1.5 million miles or 2.4 million kilometers away. Janssen's distance from its G-type sun, which is similar to ours, is only about 4% of the relative distance between Mercury and our sun, so Janssen circles its star once every 18 hours. With its blast furnace surface temperatures above the melting point of most types of rocks, the molten surface is completely uninhabitable. Scientists have also observed that the planet is tidally locked to the star. That suggests that one side always faces the scorching sun. It doesn't rotate as it revolves around its star. Observations from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope indicate that the hottest zone might be slightly offset. According to cosmologists, the offset heat might be due to a thick atmosphere that can move heat around the planet. The next hypothesis is that it rains lava at night in a process that removes heat from the atmosphere. This, however, entails that a day-night cycle does exist, which might be due to a 3 to 2 resonance, meaning three rotations for every two orbits. We see this same phenomenon in our solar system with the planet Mercury, so scientists are anticipating confirming their hypothesis and settling facts once and for all. To test these suppositions, two teams are being assembled. One team, led by research scientist Renyu Hu of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, will examine the planet's thermal emission for signs of an atmosphere. Simultaneously, the second team, led by Alexis Brandeker, an associate professor from Stockholm University, will measure heat emittance from the lit side of 55 Cancri E. Earlier, the term G-type star was mentioned. Let's back up to make sure everyone's on the same page. A G-type star is also called a yellow dwarf with a solar mass of 0.9 through 1.1 that burns at temperatures between star 5300 and 6000 Kelvin. That's about 9000 to 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Their variations are closely related to their luminosity. That in turn makes them very useful when measuring interstellar and intergalactic distances. Most suns seem to be spectral type F, which are moderately hot, while cooler suns like ours burn at a minimum. Now, let's journey to the next JWST Super-Earth target and its Type M star. Discovered in 2018 by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Satellite Survey, or TESS, mission, planet LHS 3844b is located 48.6 light-years from Earth and has a radius 1.3 times that of our home planet. 
It orbits a small, cool type of star called an M dwarf, especially noteworthy because as the most common and long-lived type of star in the Milky Way galaxy, M dwarfs may host a high percentage of the total number of planets in the entire galaxy. So, exoplanets like LHS 3844 aren't so rare. Neither is the fact that it is also a close orbiter. This seemingly doomed planet is moving around its parent star once every 11 hours. Albeit, as a red dwarf, the star is smaller and cooler than that of Janssen's G-type sun. So the planet's surface is likely much cooler, yet still too hot for comfort. According to the Spitzer Space Observatory's data, there is likely no substantial atmosphere present on the planet. And again, similar to our moon, LHS 3844b is a tidally locked planet with a permanent day side and night side to its star. To discover whether the planet has an atmosphere or not, teams prepare to measure the heat given off by the planet's various faces during its orbit. Once they are able to determine the temperature difference between the day side and night side, that question of an atmosphere will ultimately be answered. And so far, it seems that our exoplanet in question is lacking an atmosphere. When tests were run by a NASA team using the Spitzer Space Telescope, one instrument that measures infrared radiation, or heat, was pointed at LHS 3844b for 100 hours, which allowed it to capture about 10 orbits of the planet in total. Although this method has been done before with planets close to the size of Jupiter, it was the first time to run this procedure on an M-type dwarf solar system. Researchers calculated that the day side is a blazing 1000 kelvins, or about 1340 degrees Fahrenheit whereas the night side plummets to as low as 0K, or minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Overall, the drastic temperature differences signify that the planet does not have a thick atmosphere like Venus. The researchers have concluded that LHS 3844b is essentially a super-hot, bare rock planet. The team in charge is led by astronomer Laura Kreidberg at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. Kreidberg and her team hope to catch a signal of the surface using spectroscopy, in which different wavelengths of light suggest different elements. Thermal emission spectrums of the planet's daylight side will be compared to known rocks like basalt and granite to see if they can deduce a surface composition. In another method, the team looked to identify its composition by measuring the reflectivity of the planet's surface. As we know on Earth, different minerals reflect light to various degrees. Basalt, which is black solidified lava, reflects very little light, whereas lighter colored rocks like granite, containing minerals such as quartz, have a higher reflectivity. The team measured the ratio of the star's brightness with that of the planet's in order to calculate the planet's reflectivity. With this study, Kreidberg was quoted saying, We can see a granite-like surface is ruled out by our data, whereas a dark material like a lava field in Hawaii, or the lunar mare, or like the surface of Mercury, is consistent with our observations. In the same statement, Kreidberg said, the two investigations will give us fantastic new perspective on Earth-like planets in general, helping us learn what the early Earth might have been like when it was hot like these planets are today. The JWST is now working through latter stage commissioning procedures like tracking targets in the solar system. The $10 billion observatory should finish its commissioning around June or July and move into its cycle one of observations shortly afterwards. Spitzer and NASA's Hubble Space Telescope have previously gathered information about the atmospheres of multiple gas planets, but the use of the JWST to take a new look at LHS 3844b appears to be a huge challenge, as it is the smallest planet for which scientists have used the light coming from its surface to learn about its atmosphere, or lack thereof. So far, it's surmised that LHS 3844b is quite dark. It's been described as a barren wasteland of basalt, ancient volcanic rock. But don't fret if you've been desperate to hear about the discovery of an Earth-like world. What may seem like a supersized floating rock may actually turn out to be a treasure planet. As of the 1st of June this year, there have been 5,059 confirmed exoplanets in 3,733 planetary systems, with 824 systems having more than one planet. That's a large selection to choose from. So which exoplanet would you ask NASA and the JWST to target next? Submit your expectations in the comments section below. As we continue to explore the cosmos, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your control interface and head to the archives to activate more videos from Space Infinity.